taking pride in your line of work. Para nosotros fue importante nuestro trabajo porque era cuidar a las personas que están en estos edificios diarios. For many, taking pride came with health risks during the height of the pandemic. Yo arriesgaba a mi familia. Mis compañeras arriesgaban a su familia. Also like many, Juliana Guerrero, a janitor in Denver, still showed up since it meant taking care of her family. The same deal for her fellow workers, she says. Porque ahorita es debatirnos entre pagamos la renta, pagamos la comida, llevamos a nuestros hijos a la escuela. As a member of the union, SCIU Local 105 in Denver, she also took part in negotiations with janitorial contractors to help her fellow workers. You see, Denver raised the minimum wage this year for non-tipped workers to $17.29 an hour. Nine Wants to Know found that that's a 70% increase from 2018, which outpaces inflation's growth of 19% in a similar time period. But what constitutes a living wage could vary depending on the report. A professor from MIT, for example, developed a living wage model showing that a single person living in the Denver metro area without kids needs to make $19.62 an hour to meet basic needs while also maintaining self-sufficiency. That number goes up to $38.42 an hour if an adult is responsible for caring for a child. We call it a living wage, not a minimum wage. Stephanie Felix Zoe is president of SEIU Local 105. She believes conversations around negotiating wages starts with understanding. You know, our members and the workers being affected positively by these increases um, are obviously being impacted immensely and are grateful and that we can also say in the same sentence that it's still not enough. And while workers like Guerrero acknowledge that the recent wage increase is helpful, they're ready to push for more. Pues que tenemos que seguir peleando, eh, seguir luchando para que nuestros representantes entiendan que ellos tienen que dar más uh, un sueldo mejor para que la, la gente pueda vivir cómodamente. So that MIT professor that we talked about there says some of the things to help close the gap include building more affordable housing, helping pay for transportation, subsidizing child care, some of the things that we've heard about in the past, Kim. Yeah, when we think about this and the impact it has all the way around families, and, and I mean, many people complain about trying to find a place to live in Denver, period, but also businesses. We've heard from businesses saying that it's hurt them as well. Right, Book Bar, for example, their owner posted that the nail in the coffin, it was a lot of factors that led to their closure that will be happening this month, but they said the rise in minimum wage did play a factor in there, and Stephanie Felix Soe with the union there says this is all part of that conversation of, you know, coming to the table and negotiating. Yeah, something has to be done. We, we got to help everyone, families and businesses. Yeah. Thank you, Luis.